Hello weather wizards, my name is Aspen Evans and I'm an Oklahoma 4-H STEMist. And you are watching Weather Wizards. This is day three, Wicked Wind, of a five-day series. Welcome back, weather wizards. You may want to hold on to your hat for today's lesson. Oklahoma is one of the handful of states that is located in Tornado Alley, a section in the middle of the U.S. that got its nickname because of the areas most likely to experience tornadoes. But with the right weather conditions, tornadoes can happen almost anywhere in our country. A tornado, or twister, is a violently rotating column of air that extends between the Earth's surface and a cloud. They are created when a cold front and a warm front meet. Let's imagine the warm air and the cold air are in a scuffle. One is descending or moving downward, while one is ascending or moving upward. This action creates moisture. Moisture is the other key element in the forming of tornadoes. Now, the most intense tornadoes emerge from what are called supercell thunderstorms. A supercell is a more than just a thunderstorm with cold fronts, warm fronts, and moisture. It requires winds that increase in strength and change direction with height. This is called an updraft. When the updraft begins to rotate, that makes a supercell. The supercell itself then rotates high in the air, and in some cases, it leads to the formation of a tornado below it. This tornado is the visible effect of air descending from the supercell, creating rotation near the ground. If you were able to view a tornado from the sky, you would see that the center of this tornado appears hollow. This center area is sometimes called the tornado's eye, and it forms a vortex, which is essentially just a mass of circulating air. The vortex occurs when the winds are spinning very fast, so fast that nothing can stay in the middle. The force pulls everything to the outer sides of the storm. These fast spinning winds are also what gives the tornado its nickname, a twister. Let's put all of these concepts into action as we create our own tornadoes. For today's experiment, the materials you will need are two clear bottles, food coloring of your choice, duct tape, glitter, or whatever fun object you have around your house, such as beads, and a washer. This is the most important aspect of your experiment. You'll need a washer that is smaller than the top of your bottle. The first thing that you will need to do is make sure that one of your bottles is filled three-fourths of the way up with water. Next, you will put as many food coloring drops into your water as you desire. Make sure that it's the exact color that you wish. You can put a little bit of glitter or those objects in it, just a little bit. Don't go too crazy. I'm just gonna make it fun. Now, for the washer. You want to position your washer on top of one of your bottles, making sure that the middle ring of the washer is smaller than the neck of your bottle. Once you're happy with that, you will take your non-water-filled bottle, flip it upside down, and put it on top of the neck of your other bottle. Positioning it so that it lines up with the bottle underneath. like so. From there, we are going to duct tape our bottle. ready to conjure up a tornado. Mm -hmm. 
As we have learned today, tornadoes are created by supercell thunderstorms, as well as some pretty wicked winds. For more information on how tornadoes are formed, click the links below. Show off your tornado on Flipgrid, as well as fill out all the questions on the Microsoft document attached. Make sure to bring your sunscreen tomorrow, because we're going back to olden days to cover how we can use the sun to tell time.